Hello, and welcome to our Scrum Study course on a guide to the Scrum body of knowledge. In our introduction to the SBOC guide, we covered an overview of Scrum as a framework, the purpose, how it's used, the framework of Scrum, and how it differs from other traditional project management methods. Now that we have quite a bit of information about Scrum, it's time to share the ground rules governing Scrum as a framework. These ground rules are the Scrum principles. And the Scrum principles are the foundation on which the Scrum framework is based. The principles of Scrum can be applied to any type of project or organization. They must be followed in order to ensure an appropriate and successful application of Scrum. Within the scope of these principles, the aspects and processes of Scrum can still be modified to meet the requirements of a specific project or of the organization using them. The Scrum principles themselves, however, are non-negotiable and must be applied as described in a Guide to the Scrum Body of Knowledge, or the SBOC Guide. Keeping the principles intact and using them appropriately gives those using Scrum confidence in the framework's ability to help them attain their project's objectives. The principles are considered the core guidelines for applying the Scrum framework. According to the definition in the SBOC Guide, the principles are applicable to portfolios, programs, and projects in any industry, projects of any size or complexity, products, services, and any other desired results to be delivered to stakeholders. In applying these principles, it's helpful to remember how the SBOC Guide defines the term product. The term product can refer to a product, service, or other deliverable. The Scrum principles are as scalable as Scrum itself. The scalability of Scrum is that it can be applied effectively to any project in any industry, be it small projects with teams of six members or large, complex projects with up to several hundred team members. The six Scrum principles include the following. Empirical process control, in which many decisions are made based on observation and experimentation rather than on detailed and predictive upfront planning. Self-organization, which implies that team members have the authority and responsibility to figure out ways to convert the prioritized product backlog into finished products without the intervention of stakeholders outside of the Scrum team. Collaboration, in which product development is a shared value creation process that needs all stakeholders working and interacting together to deliver the greatest value, value-based prioritization in which the highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of maximum business value. Time boxing, in which time is considered a primary constraint and many scrum processes and activities are allotted a fixed amount of time. And iterative development, in which all work is divided into units that can produce a potentially shippable deliverable. Each of these will be developed in more detail in the next sessions. And this wraps up our introduction to Scrum Principles. I look forward to seeing you in the next session in which we'll study what the SBOC guy says about empirical process control. Until then, thank you for learning with us.